Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to PDPW's Exhibitor Webinar. My name is Julie Gabris, and I am Professional Dairy Producers Member Resource Manager and the PDPW Business Hall, Conference Hall of Ideas and Trade Show Coordinator. We want our exhibitors to have a successful event, which is why we are offering you this free webinar. We don't want you just to rent the space and hope it works out for your company, but rather give you the tools to succeed at our conference, which is set in a very unique educational environment. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Jefferson Davis, who is America's leading trade show expert and president of Competitive Edge, a highly specialized consulting and training firm for trade show exhibition excellence. He has delivered trade show education programs to over 270 show organizers, including 50 of the trade show news network's top 250 trade shows. With that, Jefferson Davis. All right. Thank you, Julie. And again, thanks to everybody for uh, investing time right out of the gate in the new year here. Um, you know, the show is uh, beginning in early March, so we're right in the sweet spot to talk about this important topic today. Um, the title of today's session is Increasing Your Brand Visibility and Driving Qualified Booth Traffic. So we're going to walk you through a proven effective process that will help you identify and attract enough of the right attendees to your exhibit. Because in my experience, one of the primary factors that limits most exhibitors' results is their inability to get enough of the right people. So we want to make sure you have this base covered and you have the foundation set for a highly successful event. This program is part of PDPW's commitment to you as an exhibitor to add value, add to your knowledge, and guide you to a more successful exhibiting experience. And this is only part of the complete program. We'll be uploading the replay of this webinar on the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center you see on the screen. We have articles there, single focus topical articles. And at any time you've got questions about trade show productivity, you have access to me and my team. Um, all you have to do is click on the blue icon that says Ask the Trade Show Experts. Send us an email and we will respond quickly. So if you haven't seen me around the circuit, um, my background is pretty simple. I don't know much, <laughs> I say, but I know trade shows. Uh, I've been involved in them now for over 30 years. I've always been on the hunt for what makes the difference between making an expensive appearance where you show up, you fly the flag, you hand out some tchotchkes, you scan some badges, you go home, or making a productive, profitable investment. And I've been working on this for over 30 years, and I think we've cracked the code. Uh, one reason I can say that is of the clients that we've done tracking, we've been able to trace combined now over $800 million in results from shows. So this stuff works. It's really just a matter of awareness and action, which hopefully that will happen as a result of today's webinar. So let's talk about trade show productivity here. Let's talk about these critical success factors. You know, in my experience, the problem with a lot of exhibitors is they're caught in what I call the logistics trap, meaning they spend 90% of their pre-show time is spent on get the space, get the booth, get the graphics, get the products, get the literature, get the people, ship it, send it to the show site, set it up, tear it down, send it home, do all that on time and on budget, and call that pre-show planning. I don't really call that pre-show planning. I call it dealing with logistics. And while you have to do it, the only thing it guarantees is that your booth, your products, and your people show up. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to get anything from the big financial and human capital investment you're making in trade shows. And we don't want that to happen. So if we're going to really get value and we're going to generate return on investment, we have to focus on five critical success factors. Number one, every exhibitor has reasons for exhibiting. If I were to ask any of you, why are you exhibiting? I know you're going to give me a reason, right? But here's the question. Do you have goals? OK, 
Okay, so the first critical success factor is defining your outcomes. Okay, in Stephen Covey's great book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, habit number one, be proactive. Habit number two, begin with the end in mind. That's what I'm talking about. The major question that every exhibitor needs to ask and answer as far ahead of the show as possible is this. When the doors close on the PDPW conference, 90, 180 days after the show, how will we know that we succeeded in the areas of marketing, sales, and customer relationship management? We have to define our outcomes, convert them to clear goals, back them up with written action plans, and then execute and measure. Okay? Write this phrase down. It's not in your workbook. Reasons are not enough. Right? It's not enough. Everybody has reasons. Few have goals. If you want to thrust your company into the top 20% of exhibitors in any show you do, exhibit by objectives, not by hope. That's what we're talking about. And by the way, we've got a great article up on the Success and ROI Center called Planning to Win. Number two, selective attraction. Here's the big idea, okay? Not everyone that attends the conference is your ideal customer, number one. And number two, you probably can't handle everyone that attends. So what you gotta do if you're gonna win the game of exhibiting is we have to identify who are you defining as your ideal visitor, one, two, We've got to craft a value proposition, a reason that forces them to put you on their agenda and forces them to visit you while they're at the show. And then we have to communicate our value proposition through targeted pre and at show marketing. The end game is what? Attract enough of the right people. This is the equivalent of winning the game before kickoff. And that's going to be the deep dive we're taking in today's webinar on that topic. But number three, right? You've also got to think through the visitor experience. People come to trade shows to do more than they can do on your website. It's about interaction. It's about immersion. It's about seeing, touching, talking. So what we have to do is be very thoughtful about our booth, our product presentation or demonstration, and our staff. And we have to synchronize these three elements, booth, product, demo, and staff, to deliver a quality, highly interactive experience that gets the visitor to commit to a clear next action. So manage the visitor experience, number three. Number four, if you're not signing contracts on the show floor, and you ever hope to get a return on your investment, you have to accept the fact that the real product, the thing you're gonna walk off the show floor with is leads. So lead management is critical. Here's how I say it. If return on investment is the name of the game, lead management is the playbook. So that means defining what criteria do you really need to elicit and capture to qualify a lead? Then developing a natural conversational question flow, integrating it into your lead capture device, and training your staff to guide the conversation by asking the best question. Capture high quality, information rich, committed next action leads, and of course, follow up on those leads. Number five, measurement and learning. There's an old saying, what gets measured gets done, right? So we have to develop a set of performance metrics. How well did we execute our exhibit, one, and value and return on investment metrics? Where and how did we get value and return on investment? And finally, learn from the experience. 
we should be walking out of every trade show with a minimum of three solid lessons that we're going to apply at our next show to get better and better and better. So those are the five critical success factors for exhibiting. Here's the promise. Address all five of those, and not only will you win at PDPW, you'll win at every show you do. Here's the warning. Neglect any one or any combination of these five your results will be limited and jeopardized. So that raises a great question right now for every one of us on this webinar. I would like you to look at your workbook and I would like you to score your company's current level of execution on these five factors. Score it on a one to five. A five, very effective. A one, ineffective. And you can grade two, three, four in the middle. So go ahead and do that now. And as you do that, right, I want you to ask yourself, which one or combination of these factors are the limiting factors, the things that are really preventing us from taking full advantage of the incredible power of exhibiting when we do it right? I think it was Dr. Phil who said it well. He said, you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. And so this is a very quick self-diagnostic to figure out where your Achilles heel might be. For some of you, it might only be one of these reasons. For some of you, it might be all five. Whatever it is, it is. Don't fight it, right? Just accept it and learn and apply, okay? So let's jump into number two and get this thing going now, right? Marketing is what we're talking about. Selling, customer relationship management. Uh, Jim Rohn, one of my favorites, I've been listening to him for 20 plus years, said it so eloquently. He said, what is the key to marketing success? He said, number one, you've got to have something good to say, right? Number two, you've got to say it well. You have to be able to articulate it in a way that cuts through the noise, grabs the attention of your, uh, your customer. Number three, once is never enough. You have to say it often. So have something good to say, say it well, say it often. And I'm going to add to Jim's outstanding quote here, say it through multiple media, multiple channels, right? Sometimes when we promote our exhibit at a trade show, we'll, we'll go, well, we're going to send emails, or we're only going to use social media. Well. That's like putting a one-legged horse in a race. It'd be hard to win a race with a one-legged horse, wouldn't it? I think you got to put at least four legs on the horse, right? four different channels. So that raises an interesting question for us to address right now. Okay, Take a look at the screen. Now, I'm going to launch a poll here, our first poll of the afternoon. And what I would like to uh, hear from each of you is how many media do you typically use or currently use to promote your participation in a trade show? Fastest fingers, look at your screen, press the radio dial button that applies. I'll give you just a moment. We're at about 50% of you have polled so far. If you haven't polled yet, go ahead and do that now. We're up to 80%. If you haven't polled, I'll give you just another moment, and I am going to share the results. On three, two, one, we're at 85%. Thank you for your participation. Here we go. So what's happening? Well, 10% of us said we're not doing anything. Well, by the end of this webinar, I hope to change your perspective on that, because if you're not getting a big-time return on your investment, and you're not pre-marketing, I can make a direct correlation between the two. Uh, the highest percent of you, of you were in uh, three to four range. Uh, you're using three to four media. So I think that raises a great question, right? And the question would be, how many media should we use? At my thought, as many as your budget, your time, and your skill set enables you to do. The more, the merrier. 
over time, keep adding more legs to the table, if you will, here. As many as your budget, your time, and your skill set enables. Try to be continually. You want to be omnipresent. You want to be like the Internet, everywhere and nowhere at once, right? As many media as you possibly can. All right, so let's get back to, um, let's talk about one of the reasons why pre-marketing your exhibit is so critical today. And it's because trade show attendee behaviors have changed radically over the last several years. They are registering closer to the show. They're spending a fewer number of total days at a show. They are desperately looking for content and take away useful information. Number four, big. They are pre-planning their visit. Three out of four attendees arrive with a clear agenda. They know what educational sessions they're going to attend. They know what social events they're going to attend. They know where their blocks of time in the exhibit hall are. They have a hit list of exhibitors, and they organize them by must-see, should-see, nice-to-see. They've got problems back on the farm and back on the ranch that they're trying to deal with. They're looking for ideas and solutions. And the average attendee, please circle this one, write it in your workbook. Now, this is in the average North American B2B trade show. Average attendee only stops at 26 to 31 exhibits on average. Some more, some less. Here's the big one. Half of their stops are pre-planned. I want you to think about these, 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 these insights here about the attendee behavioral changes. And what blows me away is that in the average show, less then 20% of exhibitors will execute a well-conceived pre-show marketing campaign. I learned years ago, you know what, if you want to win, find out what the winners are doing and do that. If you don't want to lose, find out the people that are losing are doing and don't do that, right? So if you want to thrust your company into the top 20% of exhibitors in any show you do, here we go. Let's put together a well-conceived, highly targeted pre and at show marketing campaign. So how do we do that? Let's get into the woods and the steps here now. I've been working as a consultant and trainer since 1991 for 27 years. I started exhibiting in 1985, and I've been continually refining and improving this process. And I not only apply it every time I exhibit, but I also apply it with every one of my exhibiting clients. That I know of, we've been able to create, create $800 million in sales results from trade shows. This process is at the heart of it. Because again, if you get enough of the right people to your exhibit, you'll win. If you don't, you'll struggle. So let's walk through this process now. Grab your pen, grab a calculator. We're going to do this together in your workbook. We're going to maybe do another poll, and I'm going to have you hit the ground running with this. So when you get off the webinar, you can finish your plan and start executing. Because, hey, you've only got uh, March 13th, the show starts. And we're sitting here on, what, January the 9th. So there's no time to um, wring our hands or overthink. we got to act, like now. So here we go. Number one, why are you exhibiting? I want you to identify your top three reasons for exhibiting. I would put them in order of priority. If I could only exhibit for one reason, it would be this. If I could add a second reason, it would be this. If I could add a third reason, it would be this. You'll see the top reasons why companies exhibit at trade shows on this. They're not the only. They're the top. I want you to write down your top three reasons in your workbook right now. Then, when you get off the webinar, I want you to download the Planning to Win article. I want you to convert reasons to goals. Okay, I'll give you an example. So if you said lead generation, that's a reason. It's not a goal. It's a reason. Here's a goal. By closing time, 
at PDPW, we will have captured at least 25 qualified leads. By closing time, that's the time frame. We will, this is actionable, we're committed. At least, hey, if we got 25 by the end of the first day, we're not done. 25 gives us what, the number? Qualified gives us what, the type of lead? It's not just a, a, a fishbowl, a, a business card in a fishbowl, which honestly is a contestant. It's not a lead, and yet I'm amazed at how many exhibitors will call it that a lead. Now I'll talk to them, I'll go, how'd the show go? We had a great show. I'm like, how do you know? They go, we got 500 leads. I'm like, how'd you do that? Oh, we had a fishbowl on the table. Drop in your business card to win a GoPro. Those aren't leads. Those are contestants. And if you're having a problem with your sales team following up after the show, and you're sending them 500 contestants, dumping the haystack of contestants and asking them to dig for the needle, I can tell you why they're not following up. Right there. Okay? So, reasons to goals, goals to plans. Plans communicated, executed, measured. That is the process of exhibiting by objectives. The other way to do it is exhibit by hope. Rent space, show up, and hope. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a plan. Okay? Number two, now we've got to define or create your ideal visitor. Who, what, who do you want to see at the show? We want a broad brush profile, or in modern marketing language, they might call it a persona, right? But typically, you're going to define it by what type of operation. Is it care? Is it calf feeding? Is it calf raisers? Is it something else? And then you're going to think about the job title or the function. Who within farm influences, uses, makes buying decisions? Where are they located geographically? Does size play a factor in terms of the number of cattle or the number of farms or the number of whatever, annual revenue, uh, whatever, or the, the um, number of square footage? I don't know how you define size. You know your market way better than I ever will. But what I want you to do is sit down and write a profile. And so you'll see on the right here from PDPW that, you know, we're going to have over, over 1,700 uh, attendees. 70% of them are active dairy farm owners and managers, right? They're coming from 28 states and six countries. So maybe for you, maybe for some of you, it's growing the international, the export part of your business that's important to you. And that's you'll define. So what I want you to do in a broad brush stroke is set down and define who is your ideal visitor, right? Now, I want to share another strategy I've been using with my clients, and this one is an absolute game changer in, number one, filling our booth with qualified visitors, but number two, having a highly motivated sales team coming to the show. We call it the customer prospect suspect triangle. So in step one, sit down and create a list of existing customers who are, have, or are likely to attend the event. Right? And you always reach out and touch your customers prior to a key trade show like PDPW because if you don't, competition is knocking at the door very loudly around trade shows. Don't lose customers by default. Circle the wagons around your customers. You can see four different reasons for getting customers to the show into your booth. Relationship management, probing for additional opportunity, keeping your ears to the ground for change, and advocacy. Second area, here's where the fast cash flow from trade shows is hidden. Prospects that are in the sales pipeline or the funnel. You have one major objective to get them to the show. Move them to the next step in the sales cycle. And the third group would be your profile match, what we just talked about, or I'm going to call them suspects because they match the profile of who you sell to, but you have no meaningful dialogue, so your objective is to put a face with a face and open the sales door. So how do you activate this big idea? Well, it's easy. Okay, I want you to think about whether you have a direct sales team, independent reps, dealers, distributors. Reach out and touch them all 
ask them to build a list of customer prospect suspects. Ask them to look at each name on their list, specifically the customers and the prospects, and set an outcome, a reason for the meeting at the show. Then ask them to reach out three times before the show. And it works best when you use multiple media. Right? You don't just email, email, email. Maybe it is a connect on social media, drop an email, make a phone call. What you're trying to get is one of two things either a confirmed appointment, you know, like on Wednesday at 2 p.m. in the exhibit, we're going to meet for 15 minutes, or a verbal commitment. Yes, I'm coming to PDP Expo. Can't set an exact day and time, but I'm definitely going to see you while I'm there. That's what you're look, looking for here, right? And then if you really want to prime the pump, jumpstart this idea and get it moving, put a contest in play. If you have three or four reps or a few dealer distributors, get them competing to see who can get the highest percentage of their CPS list to your booth. And if I stopped right now and said, I'm done, I'm not telling you anything else, and you only took this strategy to heart, it could be a game changer for any exhibitor listening to this event. All right, now let's talk a little bit more lists. Okay, so you want to build your target list. So you're going to start like, <clears throat> I'm sorry that my flow is off. Um, we're, your company database is number one, and that is running the CPS process. The Department of Agriculture makes available a great grade A list that can be acquired and sorted by different geography, possibly demographics. CAFO list is a great source. If you've exhibited at this show last year, or other shows and you have lists, anybody who's inquired about your product services over the last three, six, nine months, if you work through dealer distributors, trade publication, readership lists. These are all great sources for building your lists. So what you want to do here is look at your sources, write down how many names are on the list, <clears throat> excuse me, and now you'll have your target audience for the show. Okay, grab your pen, grab a calculator. We're going to do a really important exercise right now. Trade shows are about face. That's the magic power, putting your company, your products, your staff face to face with people. People do business with people. Here's the thing. At a trade show, you have a limited or a finite amount of interaction capacity. You have to know your capacity. So, <clears throat> there are 18 total exhibiting hours in the PDP Conference Exposition, right? We're going to call that your playing field. Now, obviously, <clears throat> you can work the golden hours in the morning. You can work the entertaining hours in the evening. You can be around the educational sessions, right? There's a lot of, you can win outside the exhibit, but I'm going to build the game plan where you win from the exhibit. Okay, next point. How many people are going to be in your booth, on average, for those 18 hours? Staffing rule of thumb, 50 square feet per staffer. So if you've got a 10 by 10 booth, you have space for two staffers. That will give you your total staff hours, which is also your interaction capacity. You have 36 staff hours. Now listen carefully to this next number. I want you to set target number of interactions per hour per staffer. Three conservative, four moderate, five aggressive. If you've never used this formula before, I would like you to start at three. Okay, three interactions per hour per staffer. That will give you your exhibit interaction capacity in this example of 108. If you're playing the game conservatively, 180 if you're playing it aggressive. Now, back to our last step, compare your interaction capacity to your list count. You want your list count to be three to five times larger than your interaction capacity. And here's the good news. Okay, if there's going to be over 1,400 direct dairy professionals, it's not that hard to win. For you to win the game, all you have to do is attract and interact with, in this example, 
108. Who are the best 108 people? What are you going to do between now and when you show up to get in their mind on their agenda? That's what we're talking about here. Okay, I'm moving quick. We're on step three, and I know I'm throwing a lot at you, so I want everybody to take a breath here, take a drink of water like I'm doing if you have one, and think about uh, any questions that may have flashed into your mind so far. Go to your question queue, type, press send. Also, I tell you what else I'd like to see. Uh, so I know you're playing along with me here. I would like each of you to go to your question queue right now and type in your exhibit interaction capacity, this number right here. I'd like to see what your capacity for the show is. Go ahead and do that now. By the way, I'm not going to share any individual's number, but I just want to know that you understand the formula because this is the underpinning. If you get this part right, everything else will take care of itself. So let me see. I've got some people share it. We've got one who has uh, 108, uh, and that's right on par, 18 hours, two staff, three interactions. Somebody submitted six. I don't know how that's possible. If there are 18 exhibiting hours and you're saying you only have the capacity for six interactions, uh, that's, that makes no sense. Uh, something's wrong with the formula. Uh, if you want to, like, submit a question, there's something off. Uh, we got somebody submitting 180 interactions, 162. These are all good, right? But this number, if you understand this formula, all you got to do now is focus on getting that many people to the show into your booth, and you essentially have won the game before kickoff. And by the way, thanks for sharing your numbers on that. They're still coming in, too. Okay, let's keep rolling. Uh, next poll. All right, I want to ask you in our next poll here, what percent of your exhibit budget do you allocate to promoting your participation? Fastest fingers, the poll is live, do this now. And by the way, these are confidential, the only, I can't see your individual numbers, I don't know what you're submitting. So go ahead, fastest fingers, everybody submit right now. And I'll give you just a moment and then we'll flash the results for everyone to see. We're at about 80% of you have polled. If you haven't polled yet, I'll give you just one more moment on three, two, one. Excellent. We're up at 84%. Here comes the results. Okay. So 29% of you said we don't allocate anything. 10% of you said we allocate 10 to 14%. So I think that raises a, a really important question. How much should we allocate? Well, let's look at research. The Center for Exhibition Industry Research 2017 study found that the average exhibitor allocates what? Write it in your workbook, 14%. Again, I've always lived by a rule in business and life for that matter. But hey, if you want to be successful, find out what the average is doing and do better than average, right? So, so if 14% is the average, next slide, I'm gonna ask you in your workbook to write down your total show investment. And by the way, the budgeting rule of thumb for a trade show is your floor space cost times three to five. So if you had $900 in a single booth space, if you're doing conservative, it's 2,700 if you're doing may be aggressive, not necessarily at this price, $4,500 investment. I want you to earmark at least 15% of your budget. That would give you, in this example, a exhibit promotion budget of $400 to almost $700. There are times when you want to increase that number, when you're in a really big show. Some of you probably do other shows, maybe you do like the big poultry show in Atlanta or other shows where there's you know, 2,000 exhibiting companies, allocate more. If you got a little booth, allocate more. If you're not too crazy about where you're located on the show floor, allocate more. If the, it, the importance of the show and the match of the audience is spot on for you, allocate more. Now, some of you are saying, hey, Jefferson, I hear you, right? It's my boss. Well. Here, here's what I would tell your boss. You see this chart? If you 
get enough of the right people to your exhibit. All these expense areas will end up as an investment. Here's what I would also tell him or her. If you don't get enough of the right people to your exhibit, all of these areas will end up as an expense. What do you want here? Do you want, an, do you want to make an expensive appearance? Or do you want to make a productive, profitable investment? I'm assuming every one of you on this webinar want to you know, use your company's resources to the highest and best use. I would also go back and show your boss how attendee behaviors have changed and the fact that 8 out of 10 exhibitors aren't doing much. Not that hard to win when you're in the top 20%. Okay? So something to think about on budgeting. Okay? I view pre-marketing not as a maybe, oh, I'd like to if I could find time or money. It is a critical success factor, one of the most powerful determinants of whether you win or lose the game of exhibiting. All right, number five. Let's keep rolling. It's one thing to market your booth. You know, going to PDPW, visit booth 2484. Delete. It's another thing to market it well. The formula of attention, interest, desire, action is that's how we, that's how it works. That's how this whole thing works. So what we got to do, our first job is we got to cut through the noise and the clutter. We got to grab the attention of our audience at a trade show. The three most powerful ways to do that are N E W number one. If you got something new. You have a magnet. Scream it from the top of the mountains, they'll come running. It's one of the number one reasons why attendees come to trade shows, to see what and who is new. Number two, problematic. At the end of the day, I don't really care what you sell. I don't care if you sell a product or a service. At the end of the day, you're either helping somebody solve a problem or seize an opportunity. That is a compelling. If someone is having a problem with, uh, you know, disease or underweight or not getting enough milk, or, you know, or whatever, that's a problem. Dangle the problem. Number three, they come to trade shows to learn, right? So those are three magic elements to integrate into your message. Okay, so here's the major question I want you to get with your sales and your marketing and your product management team. I want you to ask and answer this question in writing. What situations might be happening on the farm, on the ranch, that would prompt dairy professionals to think about what you offer? Don't think about your products. Don't think about your services. Think about situations that would prompt someone to think. Okay? The end goal is the solution to a problem. What problems are they having? What challenges? keeping them awake at night? What are they freaking out about? What are they concerned about? What new government regulations have come into play, right? Once you find your situations, integrate them into your marketing. That's all you have to do. And here's what the template looks like for building your value proposition. You just got to find your voice on this. Tired of this? Worried about that? Struggling with this? Problem. Or opportunity. Interested in this? Curious about this? Want to learn more about this? Either or, or both, right? Give us five minutes at the show. See? Do? Learn? Oh, by the way, we got something super cool waiting for you at the booth. And as soon as you find your value proposition, back to the chart. Communicate that value proposition through as many channels as you possibly can. Okay, as many channels as you can. So what does that look like? Well, when you think about your marketing options in step six, now we're going to kind of analyze and select. There are some major buckets or baskets, if you will. Print and display advertising. So take a look around at what show specific media are available both pre and at, and what industry-specific media are available. Then PR, advertising you pay for 
publicity you pray for. Press release, right? Out to the media, right? Posting news about your social media channels. Then electronic or digital media, email, internet, your website, the show website, social media, the mobile app, right? And then mail, direct mail. Hardly any exhibitors are doing mail anymore. What a great time to get back in the mailbox. Why? Be where the competition isn't. The clutter is in the email box. There ain't much clutter in the business mailbox anymore. For trade shows, it is a really smart time to get back there. Why? There's hardly anybody there. The noise factor is very low. Number five, personal contact. Right? Get your reps, get your dealers on inbound, outbound calls, outreach, talk to people. Now, ideally, if you're executing a world-class, fully integrated pre-show and at-show marketing campaign, you're doing something in all five of these areas. That's the goal. That's what you're striving for. Okay, with that, um, I want to have Julie come back on for a moment because um, we're not here to sell you anything for the record. This is purely educational. Uh, but we do think it's important you're aware of what's available for free and what else might be available that can help you. So, Julie, um, tell us about free exhibitor marketing ops. Absolutely, Jefferson. Um, we do have several options that we hope that you are using. Uh, number one is our free virtual trade show that is listed on the PDPW website. That actually is live until... Uh, September 1st of 2019. So if you have not updated your information, you were sent a link as soon as you um, turned in your contract. And if you need help, just give us a call. We can help you with that. We have a mobile app that all attendees download. You're listed there as with your booth number as well as your name, as well as in our program book. So there's three options right up front in front of farmers for them to see and find you. Um, Please, we really encourage you to take advantage of the logos, the PDPW um, logo and the graphics that uh, have for our show, and that will identify your company as an official exhibitor for use on your website and your own company communications. Networking, again, keynotes, educational sessions, dinner, reception, several opportunities for you if you're interested in sponsoring something as well. But Networking is the greatest avenue to sit next to those people and have those discussions. Social media, Facebook, by far our biggest interaction at this time. Uh, feel free to use that. We are on LinkedIn, Twitter. The PDPW Business Conference in March is hashtag PDPW 2019. And then our standard is hashtag MyPDPW as well as we have an Instagram account. So use all those, they're free, they don't cost you a thing. What a great way to reach out to others. Next. Then there's some other opportunities as on a sponsorship basis. Those are corporate mission sponsor event packages for the business conference, several different things you can do there. Um, again, you could be a sponsor of the mobile app. Your logo would be on the banner of that mobile app. We have um, event sponsorships. You could be uh, sponsor a speaker, or a reception, um, a luncheon or the dinner. Better yet, sponsor farmers. Take those potential customers that you've been trying to reach out to and sponsor them. Take them with you to the business conference. What a great way to show them how much you care about the dairy industry and them as a person. Uh, the show floor and conference center, there's lanyards, registration. These are all sponsorships that are available to you. Sponsor coffee or a water station. There's snacks available. You know we all eat very well while we're there. Uh, the media room, uh, the floor decals on the trade show, several have used that. What a great way. Massage station, that's always popular and packed up. What a great way to have your logo in front of people. And then we have the learning lounges. We have the living pods in the trade show, as well as the popular ice cream stations. Now, for sponsorship, feel free to call our office. But our contact person, or your contact person for sponsors, is Amy Bonamy with the PDPW team. So thanks. And if you're interested, just let us know. We're here to help.
All right. Thank you, Julie. You know, here's really the best advice I could give every exhibitor listening to our web webinar today. A trade show works best when the show organizer and the supply side of the industry, you the exhibitors, are working together in a spirit of harmony to sense and serve the needs of the dairy producer marketplace. And with that big idea in mind, I think it's really important that you view Tracy and Julie and Amy and really the whole team at PDPW as your marketing partners. They are incredibly nice people. They're super knowledgeable. They will do any and everything they can do to help you succeed. But it takes you being willing to reach out and see it as a partnership. And give them a call. Drop them an email. They don't bite. They're very nice people, I promise you. Just you know, share what you've learned. And talk about what your goals are. Talk about who your target visitor is, right? Talk about what your budget for promoting your exhibit is. Talk about what your value proposition is. All the stuff we've been talking about in this webinar and see what they can do to help you. They've got an unbelievable number of things available that can help you. So be sure to do that, okay? So let's begin to um, put all of this into action, okay? Because really, those first six steps are the foundational, the, you know, the steps that we build the process where we define our goals, we define our audience, we build our lists, we run our exhibit interaction capacity, we um, set our promotional budget, and we select our media. So what I want to do now in step seven is bring it all together into what does this look like in action, right? Um, how do we take all of this, con this, this foundational work and execute. So here's an example. You're a small exhibitor. You're in a 10 by 10 booth. You, you're, you're playing it on the aggressive side, so you're investing $4,500 into the show. You've earmarked 15% of that 4,500 to promoting your exhibit. You have two goals. You want to really build your visibility in the market, and you want to drive booth traffic to get leads that you ultimately can convert to sales. So what does a campaign look like for you? Well, start with the customer prospect suspect strategy with your reps and your dealers. Okay? Um, you already have the names. You already have the people. Start there. Next, design a oversized postcard. Okay, and mail it out to your CPS list. Make sure the postcard has the show logo, has a clear value proposition, which we talked about. See, do, learn, get. Bring this card to the booth. Uh, take a look into PDPW's member mailing program. They can help you get in front of, in the mailbox, where the competition is light. So take a look into that. Make sure that you spend time writing an exhibitor description that not just says, since 1912, we've been the biggest, greatest, best provider of this or that, but give them a reason to visit your booth, right? And because of it's digital, make sure you got keywords. It's keyword rich. Um, request free show promotional flyers and distribute them to your customers. Carry them with you on, on your customer visits. Um, Promote your participation in social media and get involved in PDPW's social media channels. Um, use the show logo and put it on your email signature. Put it on your website. Um, put it on invoices. If you do a newsletter, put it there. Use the hashtag. Post it in social media. All of your outbound correspondence. And that would be an example of what a small exhibitor with a limited budget could do that wouldn't cost a lot and would really help them expand their visibility and drive qualified booth traffic. Let's say you are a little larger exhibitor. You're in a 10 by 30. Bigger booth, right? Not just one booth, three. So your budget's going to be in the 8,000 to 13,000 range. You're going to earmark a solid 15% of that to promotion. You have similar goals in terms of visibility and leads, but you also have two additional goals. You have a new product that you want to showcase. 
And you want to be seen as a thought leader. You want to position your company as thought leaders. What would you do? Well, pretty much the same things as a small exhibitor, but you would add some additional firepower to your campaign. Like instead of a postcard, you might do a high-level invitation type mailer with a reward for responding. Because you have new products, you're going to aggressively promote that both pre and at the show. You'll have signage in your booth, and your staff will be engaging and actively presenting your new product. Because you want to tie into thought leadership, right? you're going to sponsor maybe a speaker session and be able to show up and introduce the speaker and put your face in front of everybody who's interested in the topic and deliver a 30-second uh, a brief message at that. And to help expand your visibility around the audience, um, maybe you're sponsoring an ice cream station in your booth to attract more attendees. And that would be an example of what a medium-sized exhibitor in a show like this could do. Now, it's important that we use multiple media. It's important that we have a good message or a value proposition. It's important that we communicate through multiple channels. So what does this look like in action? Well, here's an example. If you were running print ads in trade publications or any official show publications or directories, here you go. Bring it to life and stretch. Right? It's got a bold, compelling graphic. Stretch the experience. It's got a clear call to action. It, you know, and you would see this in print form. Then you would carry consistency in design and messaging, very important, into your mailer. This would be an oversized postcard using personalization, drop in the, the recipient's name, and a personalized URL. If you look right here on the bottom, you'll see that, that we, we have a URL, a pearl, they call this, on both sides of the card, too, on the front and the mailing pad. Then, with your house email list, you would build a masthead, and you would integrate it in all of all, your inbound, your outbounds, and do a targeted email campaign to your house list. And this is an example of a two-part campaign. And then you might set up a microsite or a landing page where, the, where they can go in advance. Maybe you can collect some visitor information about what their needs are, uh, some demographic data. And then once they leave the site, it automatically prints out, bring this to the booth. And you'll notice in this example, uh, you know, to continue the experience, and reserve a flash drive bracelet. And that would be an example using print, mail, email, and web. It's very integrated, consistent design themes, strong messaging. All right, so step number eight. Here we go, the final piece of the puzzle. You don't do all this just to say you did it. You do all this because you want to build a replicable, scalable pre show marketing campaign. So you got to keep score. You got to measure. What media did you use? When was each media deployed relative to showtime? How many were emailed, print, broadcast, mailed, published, whatever? What was the cost of each one of my media? What was the number of impressions and or traceable response? One of the best things you can do with your booth staff is every visitor that walks up to your booth a must-ask question, how did you hear about our booth? Keep score. Figure out what's working, what's not. And then after the show, you're going to analyze all this and look back. Hey, the mailer worked really well. Our email, not so, so much, right, or whatever. What we learned from it was this, right, the lesson, the headlines, the subject lines, the reward. You can test a lot of different variables in your campaign. And how can we rinse, repeat, and reuse? You don't have to recreate the wheel for every show. When you find your voice, when you find your value proposition, and you find your media mix, and you find your reward that generates response, you'll get bored with your marketing a lot faster than your market will. So we've covered a lot of ground in a less than an hour here. We talked about why pre-marketing is critical. We've looked at the five critical success factors. We've walked you through an eight-step process here. This stuff works. What matters is what are you going to do with what you learned here today? So I am going to 
take a peek in the question queue. And while I do that, I'm going to uh, toss it back to Julie for any additional thoughts or closing comments from PDPW. Julie? Okay, I'm not sure if Julie heard us, but um, I, I do have an initial question in the queue, and how far in advance of a show should we start pre-marketing? And my answer is, the bigger the show, the farther out in advance. So if you're in a local or regional show, two months before showtime is probably good. If you're in a big national event, three to four months in advance. Someone asked, what promotional products work best? What I would say on promotional products is this. You want them to be the secondary reason for response, not the primary. The best ideas on promotional products would be make it useful, make it unique, make it high quality, try to get it to tie in and support a theme. Like, for example, when I exhibit, one of my themes is success is measured by the companies you keep. How do you measure up? What do you think my giveaway is with that theme? It's a tape measure with a calculator with my branding on it. I use the calculator during the interaction with the visitor. Okay, so make your promotional products unique, useful, right? quality, not cheap. Right? And then again, of course, you can't spend too much right? and, and um, tie it into a theme or a message. So that is all I'm seeing for questions at this point. Um, Julie, uh, any closing comments from PDPW on anything we've talked about here today? Other than the fact that we appreciate all of our exhibitors and if we're here for you, if there's anything that we can do to help you be more successful, give us a call. If you've got ideas of things you'd like to try, something new and unique and interactive in your booth, give us a call. We're here to help. We are always looking for new ideas. All right. Well, I want to thank Julie, Tracy, and everyone at PDPW for caring enough about um, you as exhibitors to invest time and resources and, uh, you know, hopefully add some knowledge, uh, a few new ideas to help you succeed. Uh, my closing thought is this. It's not what you heard here today that's going to make the difference. It's going to be what you do. I hope you'll take this process and adapt it and apply it for your upcoming PDPW exhibit. Because if you will, I can close our webinar today not by wishing you a productive and more profitable exhibit. If you use what you learned here and all the resources on the uh, ESRC, I can virtually guarantee you'll have a more productive and profitable event. And so watch your email. We're going to send you the uh, survey link in a moment. This webinar was recorded and will be uploaded for unlimited replay viewing. Be sure to use all of the knowledge resources, and we will see you uh, at the PDPW conference very soon. So thanks for logging in, everybody. This concludes today's webinar.